We're talking today about technology. We've talked a lot about different technologies in these machines. They've been designed to meet with our customers' expectations and requirements, but to a price ticket. And these machines take us into the mainstream arena. They're not just an OEM, high expensive automated machine. They're a machine center that competes on the market. So we're doing a series of videos uh, with the Starag Group um, on the Hecate Compact range. And with Lee Scott, uh, the uh, purpose and the um, theme behind this episode is to talk about the kind of process reliability when you're doing multitasking on machines. How do you make sure you keep the machine running? Because no one wants something like this stopping, do they? So taking this machine into account, this is a horizontal five axis machine in center with a twin pallet solution on it. Lee, it's capable of a multitude of, of machining operations. Um, but within that, what we see here is about keeping it running. So how do you do that? Talk us through some of the things that Hecker offer. Well, let, well, let's just talk about where we stand right now. I mean, to the left of you, there's a, a Balaf chip reader. So the Balaf chip sits inside the tool holders. Um, we would never advise to stop these machines and measure tools inside the machines. Of course you can. We'd normally measure them offline, load the data to a chip, take the data into the machine and automatically read the diameters, lengths, etc., into the system and assign a tool pocket, all whilst the machine's in operation. You know, you can see to the screen at the left, this is an option. Very, very useful for the operators not to have to keep running from one side of the machine to the other every time they load the tool. All the data's there. You can see a number of different options of tool storage system here. On the right side of the split screen, you've got all of the operating instructions or maintenance instructions or any other instructions that you want to load. So it's all about ease of use, functionality, continuous operation of the machine. Okay, now we've got a lot of tools, or can have a lot of tools on this machine. And like you quite rightly said, the recording of the, the tool sizes is done through the, the Balaf chip. But what about fail safes to ensure that wrong tools aren't selected, accidents don't happen? These are all important parts as well, aren't they? They are, and, and that's why the chip system works so well, because you're, when you measure the tool and set the tool, you're loading that tool with data that the machine then reads and knows. You're not relying on an operator punching numbers in a machine, maybe putting a decimal point in the wrong place or putting the wrong number in. You know, the data's automatically carried to, to, to the machine and the machine uploads it. Uh, what's the key importance to having the, the operator's manuals here? Is this just so you can learn on the job or is there, is there some greater gain uh, as well from that, from a maintenance perspective maybe? It just makes everything easy. I mean, you, you get an operator's manual when you buy a machine, a couple of years down the road it's been left in the office somewhere or lost or tipped in an oil drum and it's gone. Here we've got the, the data electronically stored with the machine, it's easy accessible, could be operated, could be maintenance, could be preventative maintenance, could be instructions sent down. You could link this directly to your, your, your systems within the factory and up, upload or download data automatically to the machines. Uh, with a machine like this running, uh, potentially lights out, twin pallet, you can have an array of automation solutions on this as well to ensure that you get that kind of unmanned run. That then warrants extra tools, sister tooling, all part of this whole all manageable. So you, you, you can start with this machine with a, a 40 tool carousel, you can go up to over 400. So there's a massive variety of um, uh, quantities of tools you can load to the machine. And then with automation, you, you, you can put all sorts of automation. It's automated anyway with twin pallet. You can put uh, robot systems onto the machine. You can put pallet systems onto the machine. And then within the machine, you, you can also use probing and measuring to quantify if the correct pallets in, the correct parts in, whether the parts are the correct size before you machine it. You can measure the part after you've machined it to make sure it's the correct size. And you can, you can measure the part within the machining process to make sure that the, the pre-cut is the correct size, automatically adjust to take your finished cut. There's very little you can't do. And, and we also know that these aren't just milling machines, there is the turning function on them. And when you put the turning tools in here, do you have to avoid certain pockets or do you have to have a space between each, you know, a turning tool and, and, a, and a milling tool? What's the fail safes in, in, in that area? It's not relevant to turning tools, it's relevant to any tools. And there is a, there's a diameter range between 
adjoining pocket. So if you exceed that diameter range, say with a large T-slot cutter, you would need to miss adjoining pockets like you would on any, on any machine tool. Well, that, that could be a milling tool or it could be a turning tool. So milling and turning, but what about grinding, Lee? These machines can do that as well. well we get obsessed, don't we, with mill, turn, turn, mill. Of course, we forget about the other technologies. So yes, we can grind on these machines. We can power scribe on these machines. There's not much we can't do on these machines. Okay, Lee, uh, people looking at these machines, they know that they can churn out work. And we've spoken about in this series about how these machines will win you work. Um, companies do often think to themselves as a price tag to be paid for a Hecker or a Starag product. But we have to keep reiterating this. These are affordable to everybody, aren't they? These are machines that are going into job shops, OEMs, people cutting all manner of components. We're talking today about technology. We've talked a lot about different technologies in these machines. As we've said before, they've been designed to meet with our customers' expectations and requirements, but to a price ticket. And these machines take us into the mainstream arena. They're not just an OEM, high expensive automated machine the machining centre that competes on the market. Okay, great stuff. Now we've done a whole series of videos talking about any, everything from the fourth to fifth axis, uh, the foundations of the machines, the controls on the machines, the automation, the work holding. You can find all of those on our YouTube channel. But as for now, if you're in, interested in improving your productivity and your throughput, making parts faster, then you should be talking to Starag about this Hecate range of compact machines.